Hi everyone and welcome to our latest Pivot Artist interview. Today we're talking with Hopi artist Mavasta Panyatu and um, we'll just jump right into questions here because there's lots to talk about. So thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to get to talk to you. I know that all of our followers were really excited about this interview because of some of the preview posts that we posted with your wood carvings and some of the really interesting pieces that are kind of very different from some of the other pieces we've been able to share from Pivot Artists. So thanks for joining us. Um, our first question is, how did you join Th the Pivot Show? Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, in 2017, um, I did a skateboard deck show with Landis and Dwayne and Flagstaff. And um, I was invited by Dwayne and I, I, I was overwhelmed at first because I didn't consider myself a painter and I was looking at the list of artists and they were all these well-known um, painters and, and, uh, and I was like, oh, well, I, don't, I don't think I belong in this group. But um, I, I decided, oh, well, yeah, I'll try it. I mean, I, I did a, a skate deck before, but I just, it was just for fun. And um, I had it for a while and I, I eventually sold it at an art show. And um, he asked me about this and I was a little because I've never done anything like that. And then it was like a show, but I tried it and enjoyed it. And I did, I, um, I, it was a really neat, um, much energy and, and um, encouragement and support from other artists to artists. And um, it, it was, it was a really neat experience. And so the next time around, uh, the Museum of Northern Arizona had wanted to open up their own exhibit. And, um, and so he invited me again. And so since then, I've been participating in, in the pivot uh, exhibits that have been happening. And so kind of a follow up to that, um, what is the word is, you know, as far as in context of the exhibit, what does pivot mean to you? I, I would say that it's it's like a transition, um, a movement. Uh, there, there's different types of cultures. There's there's native art culture. There's skateboard culture. There's painters, you know, like uh, uh, painters cultures. There's uh, so many cultures involved. But I, I think pivot is a way to transition, you know, um, bridging different cultures into a into a, 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 a whole nother unique group of, of, of artists and, and artwork and, and ideas and, and stories. And it's just, it's just a, a mixture of all of these different cultures. That's, that's kind of how I pictured on Pivot to be. Yeah, I'm um, kind of shifting a little bit, pivoting. Um, how did you first get into mm -hmm. art? Uh, I grew up um, around art. My, my dad, he's a full-time artist. He's a woodcarver as well. And um, I grew up just around it, going to art shows with him. Um, my, my uncles, they're all woodcarvers. My grandfather was. And um, so just growing up, going to art shows around the country with my, with my dad, drawing in class when I was in school, just all kind of, it was just always been around and um uh, for myself i've um i've been wood uh, working on my wood carving since i was 16 and i just turned 41 this um a few weeks ago so it's it's been a while for me but uh, I, I i i'm in a place where it's like um different ideas it's, i'm still growing in a way and it's exciting because i'm exploring different um um mediums and, and ideas and if I think of something I was like oh I, I wonder how I could put this into my you know something that I'm working on and I'm having a lot of fun with it so that's it's really great and um, I'm also a teacher so my uh, my students mm -hmm. I, I see the same thing that I was doing when I was in junior high you know drawing when I'm supposed to be writing notes or you know turning in turning in assignments with little sketches in the corner or whatever that's the same thing that I used to do too. So I, I definitely, um, I, I encourage them and then I, I share some stories with them. I was just showing, I was cleaning up this uh, little, little room right here and um, 
I, I came across some old um, papers and things that my dad had saved and given back to me recently. And they were all like little birthday cards that I hand drew and well, Bart Simpson and just different things like that. And yeah, it's just, it, I, it's just always been around me. It's, it's, it's something that I enjoy and it's just been always been part of my life. Um, switching gears a little bit, but we've been asking everyone a bit how, you know, in the current environment with the pandemic and other social issues going on, um, how, I, how you've used art, um, why you think art is important right now. And I know you've been doing some work to help raise money for your community um, in dealing with COVID-19. So maybe you could just tell us all a little bit about that. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's a way of communication. I think people uh, have energy, they have stories, they have history, they have experiences. And that's art is a way of expressing that, telling those stories and, and not just just graphic form or physical form, but you know, music and um, dance and, and there's all way, all different kinds of ways of expressing themselves. So uh, I think it's a, a, a communication tool for sure. And um, a lot of the time um, with, with the social um, issues that are, that are occurring and um, they've, they've always been around and it's always been an issue with, you know, with different communities. And um, a lot of um, underrepresented voices are now being um, listened to, or at least given a time to um, be heard. And um, uh, with the with the pandemic, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, moments in my own life, where um, uh, it's, it, it, shows what's most valuable to me and um, my family is most you know very the most important thing to me and um, when um, we're okay then I start thinking about other families like I wonder how they're handling you know this situation I think about relatives I think about um, community members um, and talking with people some of them are really scared and they're still scared and if it's a scary time and so um uh, you know you think about how you can help and what you can do uh, we're, we're responsible for taking care of each other and um so we took this opportunity to to find a way to help and um a friend of mine started this campaign in Holt Villa, which is the village that I'm from, and um, to get the village members some cleaning supplies, um, different items that they need. A lot of people don't have um, transportation, uh, they don't have electricity and running water, and um, the, the news was coming out about make sure you wash your hands, make sure you know you sanitize your areas, but the, the people in the villages, they don't have those kinds of, of supplies or mm-hmm. anything like that on hand. So we, we, we decided, well, we've got to do something to help them. So um, he came up with this group called Help Ho Villa. And um, I, I pitched the idea to him about having an um, a art sale. And since I was a, a wood carver, I said, I'll contact some a small group of um, village members from Hovilla and we can um, sell our artwork and then we can help with the, with the, um, with the campaign. So he was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So I went ahead and contacted some, um, some friends and some um, carvers and my, uh, my dad and my brother, they, they joined in as well. And uh, it we had a, a huge response. It was, it was, it was so hard to hold on to any of the carvings. As soon as we um, released them, then somebody was already inquiring, how can I, what, what do you, what can I do to help? You know, like, or I want to buy this. And, and so it was, um, had a very great response. So we were excited about that. They had a goal of um, a certain amount of money. We um, exceeded that twice, twice as, as much. So mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was huge. And so, um, when um 
and people started seeing what was happening with the with the campaign they wanted um some assistance in other villages as well so um he expanded it reservation wide and included all the villages and so um we he, we i went ahead and um said i'll i'll coordinate another another sale and we can include all artists from from different villages and then not just um wood carvings but all forms of, of artwork so we've um now that one's um called um sin moya Mungan, which is uh, for the people and um with the same same idea you know um bringing in donations selling artwork and then the money the proceeds they go to the group and then the group helps um provide supplies and cleaning items and and other items for uh community members and village members and, and all throughout Hopi. So um that's how that one's going and we are we're we're consistent I mean constantly getting uh, donations of items in and I just got a um a message about um some jewelry that was donated and some um pottery that was donated. So it, it's it's going really well and we're really excited about how much um, people are stepping up as well and, and doing something to help the, the villages and helping the people. It's, I guess, in, in a way where we're taught, you know, when you are able to help, you, you step up and you take that responsibility to help others. So yeah. I, I, it's what, what we're doing right now. So, so it's going really well. The, the energy is there, the, the efforts there, the um, commitment is there uh, to, to help our people. So that's that's where we're going with that and um there are several of these um uh, efforts uh groups that are uh, that have organized these distributions and and uh things like that to the people so yeah. we're uh, encouraging each other um to to with with what the work they're doing and uh i i linked up with um oxdx clothing and we released um, a, a series of of uh, shirts that um, show you the little graphic real quick of um, protecting yes. our elders. So that was they, that one was huge, and that one raised uh, nine thousand, which which was donated to the COVID relief uh, fund too. Wow, awesome! We've been asking all of the pivot artists um, what it means to be a native artist to them, and if it has any impact on them or their art or their identity so if there's if that's something you want to speak more to i think um uh, i mentioned a little bit earlier about underrepresented voices it gives us the opportunity to to, to tell our side of of our things that kind of um have been left unsaid and, and um I've I've really enjoyed seeing um, the empowerment that people have been showing, you know, in these past few months. Um, that um, with with um, social justice issues that have been occurring with the pandemic that's uh, that's happened, it's it's given people an opportunity to slow down and actually, you know, pay attention to certain things, which is which is which is great when you know um uh for myself i've i've um always known that this especially the the wood carving it doesn't belong to me it doesn't belong to anybody it's something that we are are given to um i mean you can use it different ways but the the way that i that i um use this uh this gift is to take care of my family and take care of others and um it's a way of sharing um what the things that i the, the the beauty that i see in nature and in our culture and pop culture and and different things that how i uh display them and depict them is um my way of sharing uh my 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 love i guess in a way to to the people that that will um will see it and, and understand it and so so um, I think um, there's there's a lot of stories that are that are told, and um, it's it's when when you see something uh, 
you you kind of already know where that thought or what the, where that where that um, image came from or what where the um, the roots of it are, and um, I, I, it's, that's it's what I um, what I try to try to display in my work is is um, telling stories, definitely telling stories and making connections. Um, I'm going to kind of jump off that and this is our last question and you've mentioned a couple times now like wood carving is your main art form or the original one. I don't know all of it. You clearly have done all of it and drawing and all of these things. Um, but we would like to hear more about your um, wood carving and maybe how you got into it. What's, did your father teach you? And uh, I don't know, just tell us more about that. Your carvings are extremely beautiful. <laughs> so. Um, it's just you can't help sure. but be drawn to them. Yeah, um, I, I like I said, I grew up with it around me. My dad was, a, yeah, he still is a full-time artist, um, wood carving. Uh, my uncles, they, 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 they're still working on their, their wood carvings. Um, and so um, it's just always been around. So it's always been something that I've been intrigued by. And the stories that they tell, the the images and ideas that they represent, it's something that I've always been drawn to, and, and replicating what human nature can, as in the families and and pop culture and and Star Wars and incorporating what we do in, in the modern culture now. It is, it's not so uh, traditional as most people would think it. It is. <laughs> Some of that I think is really interesting, you know, thinking about pivot again and like what you were saying with like the modern, the traditional. And I know that's one of the themes that like Landis and Duane, they talk about. So I do think it's interesting, like how applicable the concept of pivot is in all of these different, you know, all of the different artists lives, all of our lives and whether or not we attribute it to like them kind of being pivots or, you know, just these, interesting ways of making traditions and newer ways, but always looking back at those traditions is really interesting. And I know our audience and members and community really like that and connect with that. So thank you for <laughs> joining us today. Sorry for all the technical glitches. We're really happy to talk That's to you fine. and we'd love to talk to you again and hear more about your artwork and, you know, all the different projects that you're working on. Um, we want to thank our viewers for watching this again and please check out his artwork on his Instagram, Facebook. He has his own website and um, also look for those, all the different ways to support these different communities. Like he was saying, it's their grassroots projects. So we'll, we can share some of the ones that we know of on our stories and, you know, find out ways to connect with these communities. Um, please follow the Pivot Exhibits Instagram if you haven't at pivot underscore skateboard underscore deck underscore exhibit and us at the center of southwest studies we're always trying to post new things i know liz and i this is our favorite time of the week being able to do these interviews and one of the things you were talking about before of having you know a time to have this voice and representation i know we're so happy to have pivot at the center of southwest studies and fort lewis because it lets us connect to all of you guys as artists and all of these people and help use our platform to spread that more and show mm -hmm. contemporary native artists. So thank you for doing the work that you're doing and letting us be able to share it. Sure. Thank